Good afternoon, everyone. This is the last panel of the day, so we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have high energy. And before we get started, I've got a series of questions for you. So indicate with your round of applause if you are a fan of basketball. Are you a fan of American football? Are you a fan of international football? Football. How about, uh, also known as soccer. How about baseball? Yes. Last question. How many New Yorkers in the room? Raise your hand. So I'm going to upset a couple of you, and I may make a couple of you excited. So. Let's go Mets. As a native New Yorker, I grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, I grew up a fan of the Mets and the Knicks and the Giants. And with this panel here today, we've got almost all of them covered, just missing the Giants. So we're going to have a great time today talking about sports and talking about how sports can elevate us, bring us together. And yes, there's competition, but it's also about finding ways to use sports to inspire all of us. So that's what we're going to be speaking about today. And we've got a great panel. Uh, to speak with us today about that specific topic. Uh, I'm going to start it off by um, going in reverse order, so starting with one of the greatest legends in the baseball world, uh, Omar Minaya, uh, and I want to get his um, perspective on how it is that sports is able to bring us together as a community and inspire our young people and our future generations. Omar, if you got just a couple minutes, thank you. I'm supposed to tap here, am I correct? Yeah. Anybody hear me? Okay, good. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having me here, and it's an honor to be here today. Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, things that uh, we love. And, uh, you know, sports, uh, first of all, uh, uh, is something that, and I say this, that we all love. It's kind of a, as a New Yorker, uh, it's kind of when we talk here, there's, you talk, you put on the Yankee hat and uh, the Met hat, and then there's a Yankee hat. Something about sports that brings out joy, that brings out passion in us. Um, and when you think of us as Latinos, uh, Hispanics, uh, what do we talk about? We talk about passion, we talk about joy. And, uh, you know, sports for me is like, you know, it's, uh, and baseball is, is what, I've been, what I've done in my life. I, I am personally from the Dominican Republic. I was raised in New York. <laughs> uh, very proud of being of my, my race, my, my Latino, Hispano, todo, and especially very proud to be able to do that in, in a wonderful metropolis uh, uh, as uh, uh, the New York is, uh, in Queens. And, and, and we, when you're a New Yorker, then you go into the boroughs. You're a Brooklyn guy, I'm a Queens guy, so we kind of take those things. Uh, the best way I can, is, I, I guess so, passionate when I talk about baseball and sports and, my, and God has put me in a position uh, to be of, to be able to just to represent, um, you know. I'm trying to answer your question the best I can. It's just, for me, sports has been, in, and when you look at sports and when you look at us and when you look at our history, when you look at what we do, it is, it's, 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 está en la fábrica de nuestra comunidad, de nuestra sangre, de lo que somos. Why? Because all the things that I talked to you about before, and I love being Spanglish. I, I feel Spanglish. Uh, we're in a city that is Spanglish. And I think when we're talking about something that is underdeveloped, that is undersold, it's Spanglish. You know? <laughs> I think from a marketing standpoint, there's so much growth to be to do in Spanglish. Um, but to be short, on, as short as I can be is, it's sports is, and baseball has been a big part of my life, but because sports has been a vehicle for us, not only for joy of the, the actual thing, of, uh, of the game uh, and of the family, but sports has been also, and to me, is a vehicle of the future of, well, of all that's positive about us uh, in, within family, joy, but also the business side of sports, which is I think we're going to be talking about here. Awesome. Yes, and, and, and going uh, to that point about the business side and about the marketing of it, uh, there 
is an opportunity for us to also have these sports brands and these sports organizations really penetrate our community and have an impact on our community and bring them into the organization as well. Uh, Iris, talk a little bit about what you are doing uh, to be able to access that market, make sure that it's a win-win for both the community and the brand uh, from your perspective. I'm not going to ask how many Mavs fans are here. I'm going to stick with the bait. Uh, oh, there we go. Good. Uh, for us, it's a little different. We're always looking to change. We're always doing something different. Um, I think um, he said it best in the sense of, for me, I was the first Latina CMO for the Mavs for us to really start tapping into the Hispanic market and really understanding not only what our di how diverse our court is, but how diverse our fans have. We have 20,000 fans showing up every single night for us. We are not doing anything for them to really speak to them in their language. And how do we do that? Not only with, of course, our superstar Luca who speaks Spanish, but it's also how do we educate people on who the Hispanics are and why it's important for us to start changing our mindset to that, using more local businesses, uh, supporting more local schools, uh, donating, uh, before my time and to my time now, we've donated over half a million to actually Latino schools because no one asked the question, why not? And why aren't you researching South Dallas, if you knew the area? Why aren't you researching other areas that we are always, uh, that these fans are coming to the game, buying those $5 tickets to come sit in the nosebleed? These are the people that are really sitting there and really loyal. Uh, I mean, I think of the World Cup right now, everyone's so passionate. And I think one thing to, to add to what Omar said is the patriotism behind it. Uh, so many fans are coming out just to watch Luca, but they're also there because they're a huge fan of what the Dallas Mavericks are doing in the community. Uh, for now, what the, one of the, the, uh, the videos that is our number one video in YouTube right now, you can look it up, is when Luca addressed um, the crowd in Spanish back when we played Mexico City in December 12, El Día de la Guadalupe. And a lot of people don't know that stuff, but it takes representation it takes one person to really start make changing that mindset and if it has to be me and if it has to be me getting you know rolling up my sleeves really getting into the community doing that then it has to be and now after my end it's hiring all the right people not hiring people that know sports I could care less about that I want to know that you know your shit so I you can come bring it here and for me that is the most important thing so I get really passionate too, so <laughs> that's, that's my passion coming out. Thank you, Iris. Um, Gerson, you know, I think I, I look down at the end and I see Omar and how he was able to break some incredible barriers uh, as being a general manager in Major League Baseball, but you have also broken barriers and you've been such an instrumental part in making sure that Latinos have representation in the executive suites of, of basketball. Um, there's a difference between being a player, which is important and so much fun to be able to watch, but being in the, the executive suites is, uh, gives you an opportunity to have a direct impact in an organization and the community. Give us your thoughts from your perspective of how you've been able to, to leverage that. Thank you, Danny. Uh, the reality is, and we all know, representation matters. And uh, I'm, I'm very blessed to be here today. Uh, for me, it's a very unique opportunity. And it shows you how powerful sports are. Uh, there's no passionate response, but like a sports, a win or a loss, it incites something in you that unites people, and it gets you angry, it gets you excited, it gives you peace. I've seen grown men in locker rooms cry in tears over winning championships and very special memories and women who do incredible things as well. Uh, but for me, I'm a kid from Bogota, Colombia. Love sports, um, enjoyed coming into this country as an immigrant, the opportunities that I was given. Uh, I wouldn't be here if it weren't like for trailblazers like Omar Minaya, who was the first general manager, the first lead executive in any professional sports. And he gave me a hope and a motivation for me in my career. I didn't play basketball. I wasn't a professional, but I had a passion. And there's a number of Latinos and Latinas in this country and throughout the world that need that motivation and need mentoring and need support. And it's so incredible where a simple ball will take you. I'm so fortunate to have been in the NBA for 20 plus years, to have been the GM of the Mavericks, to have been the president of the Minnesota Timberwolves, to be associated with an organization like the New York Knicks, to be a part of USA Basketball and win a gold medal at the Olympics in 2016 in Rio. I'm humbled because that's not me. That's 
a, a sport, a platform, and a ton of people like Omar that helped me, that mentored me, that gave me an opportunity. And the unity in, in our Latino community, in this country, and throughout the world, what sports does is powerful, Danny. And to have an opportunity to experience it day in and day out in a great market like New York is something that I'm very blessed to do. Thank you, uh, Gerson. And you know what? You, you brought something up that, that made me think about how universal really sports is. I mean, you don't have to be a, an athlete to love sports. You don't have to love a particular sport to feel the power of being able to go out there and, and just go for a run or go for a walk or ride a bike. Right? Any of that is part of using the God-given gift that is our bodies to be able to, to move and do something uh, that's, that's vital for, for our health and so forth. So, uh, Alex, from your perspective at Nike, you've got the ability to impact all of these sports as well as individuals. Uh, so we've got team sports that we'll talk about, but we'll also talk about individual activities. How are you seeing the, the ability for Nike and other brands to be able to actually dive into individuals and, and communities? Yeah, happy to answer that, Danny. And thanks again for having me. I think I'm quite shell-shocked with the panel that we have here because I look up to a lot of the folks that are on this panel because for me, it's, it's getting to see myself in all of you. So I just wanna first thank you and thank Claudia and everybody here for, for bringing this panel together. Uh, at Nike, we believe in sport, in making sport a daily habit, so to your point. And we define an athlete as anybody who has a body, right? So that's, that's regardless of gender, regardless of race, ethnicity, or disability. And so with that, the power of sport is just so impactful. And what we just need to do is come together and utilize a platform like sports to really bring to together the community. If you think about what's going on right now, we have the World Cup. And this is a statistic that I, I pulled from our partners and friends at Telemundo, that they averaged 4 million viewers, Spanish speaking, of course, and that's up 164% from the opening match four years ago in 2018. And that just speaks to the power of this community and the power of sport and how we can really drive that from this community specifically. And I also want to give a shout out to so, so seeing people like Cristina, seeing, seeing people at the forefront, seeing our Latinas at the forefront of these conversations. There's another one. And there's another one I want to give a special shout out that's near and dear to me and, and our Nike community, community, and that's Monica Gill, who we just elected as our first board member, our first Latina board member at, in Nike's career. And let me tell you how impactful that has been. It's been incredibly impactful because we see the representation at the top. We see people and leaders like Monica really be the platform, the voice of the community, and the face for all of us to continue to strive for and aspire to be. And it's just so impactful. And, and we're starting to see that cascade effect, which I think is just extremely important. Sports can change hearts and minds, and it's just so great to have that type of platform that's being driven by Latinos across all of the sports. If you look at all of the demographics, all of the metrics, people who are watching sports, the Spanish speaking media, all of the indicators are directly aligning to that. And I think now we have this opportunity to take advantage of that. Thank you, Alex. You know, and, and the next segment, we're gonna keep it conversational because I, I do wanna to touch on the, the universality of sports, how unifying it can be. We all have, uh, those experiences where irrespective of where we come from, whether we're Puerto Rican, Mexican, Colombian, whatever it is, that there's a, there's a sports team or a sports figure that we look up to that inspires us, that gives us emotion. I remember as a kid growing up in, in Brooklyn, go, sneaking into Shea Stadium and having the hair on my arm stand up when I heard the first pitch. Um, it's just a, 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 an experience that we all share that whether it's a, a home run or a touchdown or a goal, it's the ability to be able to experience that even if you're coming from, in my case, like the case of I grew up poor in the streets, you can still go and watch it on TV or go to a game and feel that electricity, that, that vibrancy that is sports that we can all share. So let's go just a, across the table and talk about that. what are some of those individual experiences that really makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up and saying, wow, this is such a unifying force that is the sports experience. Omar, why don't we start with you? Uh, am I good here? Yeah. Uh, well, for me, uh, of course, it's similar to uh, as a kid growing up in New York, uh, in Queens. Um, there's no bigger figure to us Latinos immigration uh, uh, immigrant uh, 
community that Roberto Clemente. I mean, Roberto Clemente was, uh, you know, uh, you know, he is our Jackie Robinson. You know, uh, as a kid, you know, in Queens, uh, to be able to go to Shea Stadium, and 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 just the pride of uh, of what he stood for. So to me, that's that was like, you know, that's the guy. That's the <laughs> And, um, you know, you went there, and you probably went there with your father. So back to sports, connecting, you know, it's not only the base, it's not only that what goes on in the field, it's the memory that's left behind and the hope. And to me, what, you know, as Gerson talked about, you know, and we that are here in this room, you know, uh, we are hope to, you know, we don't realize it, but we are hope to other, that generation behind us. And uh, Clemente, for me, was that experience of Roberto Clemente. You know, not Bobby Clemente, Roberto Clemente. You know, and being a Dominican, he's Puerto Rican, we're all the same. Somos Latino. And that's how I felt. Who agrees that we should get number 21 retired in baseball? Uh, I love that story. And did you know also that uh, Roberto Clemente is a veteran? He served in the Marine Corps wow. as well. Um, Iris, Gerson, your thoughts? We were figuring this out right now. <laughs> okay. uh, I think for me, and uh, it was a reason why I wanted to get into sports, but I really did to make sure that I was actually good before I got into sports. It really is what's happening now in the World Cup. Uh, for me, rooting for Mexico in Mexico for 20 years that I've been around that whole industry. I mean, I cried on Wednesday when we got eliminated. And, and being a, a, a daughter from immigrants from San Luis Potosí, for me, it's very important. So, <laughs> Potosina de corazón. See, so for me, that was always one of the biggest things. But you think about what you're, what's happening right now with the World Cup. You have families, friends, you know, bars are stacked up, you know, watching semifinals, finals. For us, it was the neighbors down the street, El Señor del, de la Barrote de la Esquina. It was all of us together outside in one little window watching a game because we were in it just at four in the morning watching Korea play. It was for me, that was a moment where I'm like, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of sports. I want to be part of the patriotism that we bring to the table. And because of we are Latinos and how important it is for us as well, it really is, it was that moment where I'm like, I'm going to be there one day. And outside of that, I would say probably, um, I mean, it's a given. For me, it was Dirk. Uh, Dirk, for hands down, has been the most gentleman uh, of sports that I've known as an uh, athlete even till now. He signs every single fan autograph that they mail over to our offices until this day, and he's already retired. Uh, but he ha shakes everyone's hand. He's polite to every person that he walks, he passes through. If people are pulling him for photos and everything, he's just genuinely himself, and he just happens to be a superstar, and he doesn't really realize. He doesn't focus on that. He focuses on him as his, himself as a brand, as just Dirk Nowitzki. And for me, I fell in love with the Dallas Mavericks because of him, even being from Dallas. But for me, uh, I'm one of five, and I, am, uh, I have one brother. Uh, all the other ones are girls, so I was the only um, tomboy in the family, so I had, to, I had to step it up for my dad who played baseball. So uh, for me, that was definitely the moment, but definitely World Cup. And I mean, you guys see it now and experience it. I'm walking around looking for the Mexico flag. I'm like, oh my God, here it is. But it's, it's that. So I think that was the biggest moment for me, especially knowing that I know in the, I'm in the right industry and in the right time. For me specifically, it wasn't one player as much as it is uh, being an immigrant in this country, uh, seeing the representation of Latinos in different sports. I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in basketball, which is more of an international sport, so you see players from everywhere. But building a team together, putting a team together, and the different dynamics that go into play, uh, it's such an exciting time for Latinos. And whatever it's music, culture, food, and sports, like we're seeing Latino leaders, Latina leaders, all over the platform. For me, growing up in Houston, seeing the Rockets winning championships, a guy like Hakeem Olajuwon and understanding, hey, where did that guy come from? What is his background like? 
loving baseball from a very early age and seeing the strong representation of all the Latinos in that sport and just seeing it come together, the platform and the pride of seeing there's nothing like the World Cup and to see people from all classes and all areas come together to cheer country, cheer team, I think is something that we all share in common. But just the impact and the passion of sports does it for me. So I'm a fan of all these sports, um, which is great. I'm also a Dallas native, so as you, as you can imagine, it's 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 the Rangers, baseball, it's the Mavericks, Iris, it's the Cowboys, NFL. I mean, FC Dallas, everything, right? And and I was just telling the story to Omar, which was my first impactful moment in sports, and that's when my dad took me to my first baseball game, Texas Rangers Stadium, and it was July 28, 1994. And uh, some of you are thinking, like, oh, that's an interesting date. Well, I had gone as a Boy Scout, and we had third th nosebleeds up on the third level. I mean, so I couldn't even really see the game, but it was my first experience in sport. It just happened to be when Kenny Rogers threw the perfect game, threw his perfect game that game. And so I was immediately drawn to baseball. It was just a wonderful experience. And it's funny now thinking about how I've paid that back even to my own children in taking that experience to, to my son, who I took for the first time to a baseball game last year, Texas Rangers game as well, and I caught a foul ball. It just happened to be something that never happens, right? But I was able to give him that foul ball. Ever since that moment, and you guys will appreciate this, he's been hooked. So now I'm like, how do I get him out of wanting to do baseball all the time, right? Because he's so obsessed. But that's the beauty of sport, and that's the power of sport and community. And, I, and coincidentally, that was also a, a generational thing for me and, and mi familia in terms of having my dad there, taking my dad to the game, who took me to that game, and having three generations there where I get to take my son and give him that same experience and exposure in that moment. So that was really passionate for me. And I've had multiple moments like that across just watching sports and, and really enjoying the experience. And I, I just hope we all share that same experience together as well. Yeah. And I'm not going to talk about how the Rangers just stole Jacob DeGrom from the Mets, but uh, <laughs> for $185 million. Um, there is something really special about how you know, you couldn't imagine Major League Baseball today without a strong cadre of Latino players on virtually every team. I think this year was the first time during this season that we had a team field, uh, a team of all Latino players, right? That happened this year? Yes. That is true. That did happen. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So. I tried doing that when I was with the Mets, but I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get to it. Years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's not the case in, in all sports, right? So it gives us an opportunity to see how we can, with some of these incredible brands, how we can find ways to be able to bring Latinos into, whether it's as athletes or whether it's working within the organization and marketing or what have you, there are ways to be able to increase diversity within some of these organizations, some of these brands, um, and finding ways to be able to leverage that. So even if we don't have massive amounts of players within some of these teams, or companies, we have the ability to bring them into the organization in ways that, that make a difference. Well, let's go the other way around. Alex, why don't we start with Nike? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's an entire ecosystem, right? It's not just who we bring into Nike, who we sign as players and athletes. It, it's, it's the full ecosystem of diversity. And so at Nike, we're very much focused on diverse representation programs in partnership with a lot of the leagues here, a lot of our specific clubs, and even to an extent, some of our signature key athletes. And one particular program that we have to really think about diversifying, uh, d diversifying uh, the design organization, the folks who build shoes, build apparel, who pr design what it's gonna look like, what are the different colorways, what are the accessories, et cetera. One of the biggest gaps that we saw just a few years ago was that the designers didn't necessarily look like the, the communities that we were trying to attract. And if you think about sneakerhead culture, just in general, it's driven by all of us here. Sneakerhead culture is very much black communities. It's Latino communities. It's those communities that are buying product, that are be fashion forward in terms of what that looks like, how that influences culture, and, and we build that culture together. But we noticed that was, a, that was a huge gap. And so we immediately decided to address that. A few years ago, we launched something called the Serena Williams Design Crew, and it's exactly what it sounds like. 
we go out and we source designers of various backgrounds, mostly black and Latino, to come into about a nine month apprenticeship program. We bring them into Portland, we put them through a whole experience and an education and learning that you would just not get off the streets, right? And what we do is we bring incredible talent from cities like New York, cities like LA, and I'm happy to say that this upcoming cohort is from the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. So we are doubling down on the Latino and Afro-Latino community and population to bring designers from those communities into this apprenticeship program. We've already seen now 26 hires that have come out of that program. We've converted about 80% of them into full-time jobs that are now designing sneakers, designing apparel for Nike. And look, the beauty of it is it's, we're not just bringing them in because we're trying to land them in full-time jobs. We're giving them experiences that are ultimately going to accelerate them no matter where they go. We don't even care if they end up at Nike. We're trying to give them an experience. They get to design with an athlete like Serena Williams, the GOAT, right, in terms of tennis. But we also put them through a very strategic learning curriculum with one of our HBCU partners, Pencil Lewis Design Academy, who formerly was of the Jordan brand. His name's Dr. Dwayne Edwards. He comes in, he gives back to the next generation of designers. And what we're starting to see is a lot of payback that's going to the community. So now what we're seeing is these designers are not just coming into Nike, they're building product, they're building product that influences the culture, they're launching product lines like La Familia, like Somos Familia in Mexico, in Europe, and they're also giving back to their community. And so we had one event in New York a few months ago in celebration of Serena in terms of art, fashion, and design. And the, the most impactful moment of that was seeing our first cohort of that apprenticeship actually giving back to the next generation of Latino and, and black designers. They were the ones doing hands-on design workshops and giving up their time, giving back to their community. And so now we're starting to see the sustainability of that program so that that talent is then giving back to the next generation. And then that's where we'll start to see some progress and some change. And that's just at the junior level, right? But at least that's a way where we're starting to make progress at Nike. Before I share uh, what we're doing with the NBA, um, as a huge Houston Astros fan, I, I have uh, an interesting story to bring this to life. As you guys know, the uh, Major League Baseball is full of Latino players, and there's Latino players that are different, uh, ir different stages of learning the English language. So it's so exciting in Houston in particular, there's a player, uh, there is a player, Alex Bregman, who decided that instead of just waiting for his teammates to learn English, he was gonna learn Spanish. Yeah. And they're taking the initiative to understand the value of our language, the uh, value of our culture, and the importance of unity in a team. And uh, that example is going on throughout all of baseball now, because you're either united as a team in order to have success. And fortunately, Omar, as you know, uh, I think the Astros won the World Series this year. <laughs> I do know that, and I was fortunate enough just to be with Dusty Baker this past weekend. <laughs> he reminded me of that. <laughs> I'm very fortunate to be uh, a part of the NBA's Basketball Without Porters program, and it's an incredible program throughout all the continents. I'm the director of the Americas, and what we do is we try to go to different regions every summer, and we identify not only the best players, but coaches, professionals, referees in that area, and we really invest in them. Uh, we invest in them through a camp, through a clinic, and through exposure. We bring in NBA coaches, NBA executives, NBA scouts, and we really want to give them the best evaluation possible. Not every one of these players are going to become a professional or play in the NBA, but it might give them an opportunity to get exposure, players from the ages of 14 to 16, to get a college education, to get a scholarship, to go to the U.S., to have exposure and opportunities that they maybe couldn't get. And we want to pay it forward. We want to grow our sport by doing our part as a top professional league and helping other leagues. And there's nothing like seeing not only the talent, the passion, but the ability of professionals in one setting throughout the great continent that we live in and to see it come to fruition. And in the NBA, as we know, like it's a representation of this world and of this sport. So it's exciting. We all try to do our part, uh, but there's nothing like sports to bring people together. 
I think for me on my end, uh, I'll go back to the one video I mentioned earlier as far as it being one or a number of them viewed, and that's been three years ago. Uh, we increased our following for over, over close to a million after that day just because of him addressing everyone in Spanish. So I think that was the big aha moment for our executives to see, yeah, there's, there's a lot of money here and there's a lot of viewers that we are missing because we're not adapting to, to, the, to, to that audience. So. For us, it's definitely the, where it starts is internally, educating our, our actual employees, making sure that our employees are as diverse as what our fans look like and what our court looks like. You have to start there. If not, everything else falls flat. We have to make sure that we're capturing that audience, but also making sure that we're still talking to that audience with our content. Uh, we don't have, unfortunately, uh, our team is not very uh, fluent, especially not in Spanish. We only have Luca and we did have KP at one point. Uh, we had Facundo for about days, and then after that, he, he was gone. Uh, we were actually executing some uh, content for Argentina, and then that went out the door. So uh, for us, it's really going and making sure that we're agile for that. What we started doing the last couple of years, especially when it came to content, is uh, doing something fun for the fans. At the end of it, the fans are really consuming all that, and they're the ones really following and liking and sharing everything. So it's how do, we, uh, how do I talk to someone that doesn't know anything about uh, fruterias de, de Mexico or de Argentina or, de, or anywhere? So for us, is how do we start trying it with players where they're trying different, uh, different foods and trying to guess and if they like it, uh, and then really partnering with Frito-Lay and doing something fun like that. That. This year we did it where we were having our players translate Spanish words and guessing what word they were translating or they were actually saying out loud. Content like that is what fans want. They don't want fans saying, they don't want the players just answering the same questions over and over again that they do. They've told us that, trust me, we hear them. But it's really about how do we, they see something fun. We have to capture fans in two seconds, if not less sometimes, especially with TikTok now in the world. So for us is how do we make sure that I'm getting that fan, especially now that we opened up our Sombos Mavs. Uh, but it really, for, for us, it starts within our employees first, so that way they can understand and adapt to that. And then of course, making sure that we roll out the right content for our fans. At the end of it, everything we, I tell everybody, everything we do is for the fan. Um, our owner will tell you the same thing. Everything, everything we do is for the fan. And one of my favorite quotes of him is, he doesn't own the team, the fans own the team. That's how we really ro roll every single day. Every marketing ad that you, th you see out there for us that has our branding, we think about what is the fan going to think when they see this? How are they going to feel? Are they going to understand? Do they understand the Hispanic side? Do they understand the difference from a Puerto Rican and a Dominican? Do they understand this? So for us, that is the quality of work that we want to put out every single day. And that is the mentality that we work on, especially from the brand community side every single day. Well, you know, I think Two things uh, uh, were broached today on, on this topic, and first of all, basketball uh, and, and the sports that you guys are doing. Basketball is doing a great job uh, in, in that, and, I, and I'll just go give example, first of all. Uh, the one thing basketball has done is expanding its borders, like you said. Uh, one thing that you know, uh, basketball, the NBA has a team in Mexico City for the first time, it's called Los Capitanes. Uh, Los Capitanes is a G League team with the idea of hopefully having some expansion. So here's basketball thinking broadly, and I, I tip my cap off uh, to uh, basketball. And Gerson, you talked about basketball without borders, you know. Um, as far as the, the Mavericks, um, you lost some of the Hispanics. Just want to let you know there is a Latino kid by the name of Justin Manaya, who's my son, <laughs> who happens to play for the Capitanes. So when you go back, you can at least mention to your owner that there is un Dominicano in Mexico City, Capitanes, that would like to play for the Mavericks. That goes for Gerson also. Okay. <laughs> you know, you always, uh, always when you're kids, you always do anything you can. That's right. As far as baseball is concerned, baseball, you're right. You know, baseball, and I say this, uh, you know, Claudia, uh, this is a great event. Uh, because this is not only about what we're doing, but the question is, what are we going to do going forward? And to me, you know, baseball, is a, is a, all you had to look at was the World Series. It was Latino dominant. That home run was a Cuban kid by the name of Alvarez. That was a home run, if you're an Astro fan. The pitching was Dominicano. Okay, the catcher was Puerto Rican. The second baseman was Venezolano. 
the Dominican was Dominicano. The third baseman just happened to be a Jewish kid by the name of uh, uh, Bregman. Bregman. So that's, that's, that's what baseball. Now, baseball is investing. Baseball is investing in its development. Uh, if you understand baseball, the academies, education. You know, we need to continue to educate because we're bringing kids in at a very young age. Uh, the game of baseball and sports in general, it's investing in it. But to me, we can talk about it. But we need to see those league executives. We need to see those guys in this room next year. That's when we start making a difference. So I just want to say that is there for us. We just, the challenge is going forward. How do we do that? How do we talk, not only talk about it here, how do we bring those executives and bring in, into this room next year? That's what I have to say. Here, here. What, what a great way to wrap it up. And, and Omar is, is like Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. He's got the influence and he's really taking advantage of it. And he's a living legend. We are so proud of you, Omar and Gerson, and all of you for the important work that you're doing. I'm gonna, in honor of World Cup, so whether a baseball fan, a basketball fan, or, or what have you, let's imagine our favorite team, or whatever the sport is, imagine we're in the 90th, 90th minute of the final World Cup game, and the, it's Team Latino. And we just scored a goal to win the game. Let me hear you make some noise for Team Latino.